Hi friends, my name is Bruce Wood. I'm here with Sarah Alexander at the Woodshed Gallery in Franklin, Massachusetts. Right now we're featuring an exhibition of Sarah's watercolors. And there's a few things I'd like you to notice about the watercolors as Sarah gives the introduction. And actually when you come here to see the exhibition, you'll really realize what I'm talking about. She paints with watercolor, but none of these paintings are under glass. These are large paintings, most of them, and they're on canvas, which is unusual in itself for watercolor. And then she's sort of pushed the boundaries of it and, and added some textures. Now, I know she has very personal reasons for doing all of this, and when she was telling me about the paintings earlier, she mentioned that they are often metaphors for things going on in her life. So, with my brief introduction now, I'd like Sarah to really let you know what's going on. Sarah? Okay, Bruce. Um... Let's start with this one. This is a watercolor on canvas. What I did was I got sick of using watercolor on paper. I got bored with it. I was trying to find out, figure out a different way of using it, and I discovered these watercolor canvases. I had started using small ones and um, thought, you know, what the heck, I'll try doing a large one just to see what happens. Well, you know, watercolor, I had to use giant brushes, almost an entire tube of paint ended up going on this. But what I did was, um, it's watercolor on canvas. The white here is the white of the canvas. I liked the way I could still get the luminosity and the transparency of watercolor, but I, I got a richness with this canvas. This one, I was trying to depict a sense of calm. I used cool tones. Um, I called it Sweet Dreams. It um, is sort of a still, moment. Um, maybe I was looking for some calm at that time, I don't know. Um, on this one, I started to experiment with handmade paper and uh, what I do is I buy this beautiful paper and I end up uh, using it in here to add a little texture, a little bit of um, life to the paint to the painting. So. And this one I used several different colors and I did it almost as if they were brush strokes and I felt like it gave it a little bit more sense of movement and life. And uh, this one I called it No Worries. It was kind of a confident painting about uh, no matter you know what's going on around me, I kind of felt like I feel very um, content even around all the chaos that is my family and life in general. I chose dandelions partly because they might symbolize, uh, say, my kids growing up and leaving home and, you know, that's where they're sort of breaking free and going off into the world. Over here I have letting go, a uh, similar thing but sort of cooler tones, a little bit more movement. I wanted to give the dandelion a kind of a fluffy, uh, light, airy feeling and that's been interesting trying to balance how much texture I add and what mood I'm after. Um, but I liked doing the three of these together. They sort of one led to an idea for the next one which led to an idea for the next one. Another thing I'd like to add is I started doing close-ups of my subjects when I was having problems with my eyesight due to complications from Graves disease. Um, so that's one of the reasons why I got into this, noticing things really close up, noticing the textures and the patterns, and um, it, it intrigued me and I wanted to really capture that, and I wasn't happy with just painting it. So um, I started experimenting with all these alternative um, materials, and when I developed this zoomed-in style, it was partly because I was having trouble with my eyesight. I chose the uh, Black-Eyed Susans as my subject because we had such a drought last summer. I have a big garden um, in my yard and the only thing that was living through that hot summer after all the rain were Black-Eyed Susans and they were everywhere and I chose the name Dog Day Warriors because it was the dog days of summer and it was the only thing that was um, surviving in an acre of gardens in my yard. I was always fascinated with the seed heads in um, Black-Eyed Susans, so I 
started playing around with the paper in my studio and got the nice texture here with the seeds and, and even the pollen that was on them. I, I thought that that was kind of pretty how it has this sort of bright yellow pollen. I couldn't figure out a way to paint it on vibrantly enough with the watercolor that I was using. I tried a few things and wasn't very happy with it, so I clipped little pieces of this handmade paper and I ended up with, with this painting. I'm very fascinated with movement. This, this past year I've really been focusing a lot on capturing movement in my paintings and, and even though there's sort of still, there's wind depicted here with the brush strokes. I used um, a lot of found objects in these two some fortunes from fortune cookies in here that friends had saved and collected for me. I've done several of these collages. I call them my Orchid Queen series, The Adventures of the Orchid Queen. There's this little re miniature replica of one of my paintings of orchids that I had just played around with in some collages and people were responding and I, I realized she sort of looked like a creature so I named her the Orchid Queen, and she's sort of a symbol for my alter ego, you know, a strong, confident, powerful little goddess, or whatever you want to call her. This particular one is called Insomnia. It sort of depicts, the, you know, my not being able to sleep because I have a lot on my mind, and all the little fortunes are sort of like the, you know, advice that I was getting, and... Um, it's sort of interesting that all these little things came from different people, um, tea bag fortunes and Chinese food fortunes, I cut them into the leaves. And then when I did this one, it gave me the idea to do another one of the same tree, which actually is a real tree that's in Lexington. I saw it on the way to the Decor of a Museum one day when I was driving. I made my husband stop the car and I took pictures of it because I thought it was so cool looking. It was all twisted and um, when you paint it with a, a daylight background it has a whole different mood to it. So on this one it just sort of, you know, the, the strings have fallen, they're laying on the ground, there's a little less movement to the, to the painting. The, the lighting is a little brighter. It's more you know, the way things look in the morning after you've had a restless night's sleep, things that don't seem so bad, all those things you're worried about getting done or you're thinking about, um, you know, seem a little clearer. So I, I thought I would create a, this one as a companion to that one. Jumping over to the reeds, I've been fascinated this past year pretty much with these grasses and reeds that grow along marshes you know, I just find the movement in the breeze, especially with these, is really fascinating. And these two depict more lighting and time of day. There's a little movement to them, probably more to this one. The one over here is more of an end of the day. And I took a little license with the reeds, and they are almost feather-like.